All right, we mentioned the Dallas Mavericks taking on the Rockets tonight. No Luka Doncic for the Mavericks, who re-injured his ankle in practice yesterday. It's the same ankle that cost him four games back in December. He had an MRI today. It was negative. It's just a sprain, but there is no timetable for his return at this point. He'll face a Rockets team that have been, for all intents and purposes, without James Harden for the last couple of weeks. He has not been himself just 8 of 52 from three-point range over his last six games. And guys, during that time, uh, James Harden, as a member of the Rockets, has been a minus 38 in those six games. Ouch. Ouch. No, no flow, Matt. And, and we've, we've seen this, though, with, with he and Russ uh, saying that one guy played well one night, another guy played the other other night, and now James is on a stretch. I, I'm, I'm not liking what I'm seeing, and I'm not sure if they can really fix it because they are who they are. The system is the system. And unless Dan Tung willing to change, if you're a Houston Rockets fan, it, it could be a long season. Reading you right, when you had a, when you play in a type of game where you're solely dependent on the three-point shot, period. And when you have those cold stretches like James Harden and this team is going through right now, there's nothing you can do because think about it. They don't have an alternative way that they can play. Mm -hmm. This is it. They're all in 100% playing this way. And it's tough this way because you're relying on the toughest shot in basketball, not only to win games on a night-to-night -night basis, but to compete for a championship. And now teams are figuring out they're more yeah. physical, they're getting up, they're sending their defense to take certain things away, and now they're leaving these other guys open to make plays and make shots, and they're not doing it at a high enough clip. Rockets have lost six of nine, or one, two of three, depending upon your perspective. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, let's get some perspective on the Rockets from Houston's radio play-by-play -play voice, Craig Ackerman, with us here on Game Time. Hey, Craig, let, let's start with Harden. He is the story there right now. From what you've seen, does it feel like this is a physical thing, a mental thing, maybe something else I'm not thinking of? Uh, I, I don't think it's a physical thing. If it is, he's certainly not going to cop to any sort of physical problems. I mean, he just did miss a couple of games after getting kneed in the thigh by Carl Anthony Towns and just returned from that injury uh, against the Portland Trailblazers. But he's not going to talk about injuries. He's not going to use that as an excuse. He's just in the most prolonged uh, funk of his career. Uh, he has had some bad games in his Rockets tenure, and he usually bounces right back the next night. But that's not been the case here, and let's hope he can uh, bust out starting tonight against Dallas. Yeah, and as you you point out the slump predates the thigh injury which he had just a couple of games back uh, as you know there are only a handful of players that a team has built their system around to the degree that the Rockets are built around James Harden how would you describe just how disruptive a slump from this guy is to this team uh, significant. Um, in order for this team to fulfill its potential James Harden needs to be great now to his credit He's been great for a very long time, and he's going through here a 10-game stretch where he's hitting only a third of his shots, 23% from downtown, uh, and the Rockets are struggling as a result of it. So, yes, they need him. In order for them to be as well as they can be, he needs to play at an elite level. And, again, this just, this just hasn't been the case over the last couple of weeks. You know, on the flip side, and possibly related, I don't know, Russell Westbrook has been their best player over the past few weeks. What has changed for him? He has been, well, first of all, he had a couple of off-season surgeries, so I don't think he was exactly in full game shape when the season began. And then he ended up dislocating a finger in the preseason, which I think really affected him. And then he was just trying to fit in. And then basically what he's done over the last couple of weeks is said, you know what? Uh, I'm not a very good three-point shooter. I'm going to stop shooting threes. I'm going to do what I do best, which is attack the basket. And he's done that over and over and over again. And his numbers have been uh, eye-popping, like MVP-level numbers, like the season he won the MVP. He's just been attacking the basket relentlessly, which is creating scoring opportunities for him and open shots for his teammates. And Craig, great, great, great to have you on the show, and I couldn't let you slide without talking to you. Great to see you uh, in Utah the other night. Eric Gordon goes for 50. And people yep. are asking, like, where's Eric Gordon been? He's been there. How does James and Russ get Eric Gordon more involved when all three guys are on the floor because he goes for 50 and the next night he only gets, what, I think, what, nine or ten shots and he's just standing around. Don't they need this guy, especially when James in a slump like this? Now, there's no question about it. And, and that this is primarily why Eric has been 
coming off the bench the vast majority of the time he's been here um, to sort of stagger some of those minutes. He had that great game at Utah. They put him in the in the starting line. As you mentioned, he struggled uh, in Portland, but frankly, everybody. Um, well, there were a couple of bench guys. Macklemore and Austin Rivers played very well against Portland, but outside of Russell Westbrook, all four of the other starters really struggled uh, offensively. But Eric Gordon is cer certainly a capable scorer. As you mentioned, he dropped 50 uh, on the Utah Jazz, and he's been an NBA Sixth Man of the Year here with the Rockets, and they're just trying to find, I think right now, trying to find some rhythm with that starting unit. They've they've tried Daniel House, they've tried Ben McLemore, they've tried um, Eric Gordon, but typically Eric um, is able to get more into a flow when his minutes are staggered with James because, again, both James and Russ are very high usage guys, so there's not a lot of possessions for him to use up. So that's why, for the most part, since he's been here, he's come off the bench. Uh, Craig, trade deadline coming up on February 6th. That's uh, not far away at all. If, if this team is looking, what are they looking for? Well, they're probably looking for wing help. I mean, there hasn't been a trade deadline that's gone by in Daryl Morey's tenure here that they have not made a move. So I'm expecting them to make a move of some kind. What? I have no idea. They don't, with the way their current contracts are set up, they don't have a ton of flexibility uh, to make a ton of significant moves unless they're willing uh, to trade Clint Capella, which I'm not so sure they're willing to do at this point because he's kind of a perfect fit uh, for what this team wants to do and needs to do. And he hasn't, again, he hasn't been 100% uh, healthy here as of late with that heel problem. He's going to miss the game again here tonight. But uh, they probably are looking for wing help how and where they can get that with their limited assets I don't know but again uh, this is a team that's always made a ton of moves and I'm sure they're going to try to make one before now in the trade deadline Daryl's not shy that's that's for sure no not that. at all <laughs> no not at all uh, Craig appreciate the time Craig Ackerman with us the Rockets radio play-by-play -play voice enjoy it tonight stuff thank you thank you <laughs> uh, we showed you the uh, the announcement of the